similar to painting a picture or a piece of art of some sort or maybe just painting a building, I don't know. Um, when you see a piece of art, you're moved. Sometimes it's um, not always positive or feels good, but you're moved somewhere. And So that's what I try to do with my comedy. I try to move you. Even if it means that I move you from your chair over to the TV and you turn it off, I moved you. That's all that I'm trying to do. Keeper of the speed. You know that person? They're in that left hand lane, keeping everyone else honest. They have that death grip on the wheel. 55 is how I drive. To stay alive, I go 55. They won't budge. You pull up. You know, you ever notice what you do? You, you pretend you're going to just ram them. Do you ever do that? Well, I'll just pull up on them. Oh, jeez. That didn't work. <laughs> Try blinking the lights. Morse code, come on, lady. <laughs> this means move over. Right now. Move over. <laughs> lady. She's blind. <laughs> Got a blind woman driving. You just can't take that, can you? Do you ever do what I do? I do that highway patrol move. I mean, finally, you get so frustrated, you just do that highway patrol, you know where you go off into the gravel? <laughs> you were driving with your family? Dads kind of run the show when they're driving. They don't want anybody else driving. I drive. I'll do all that goddamn driving. <laughs> I was in a war! <laughs> 105 is how I drive! I don't want anyone alive! Mom's my... You ever drive with your mom? Oh, man, there's an experience, huh? Mm, oh. mm, mm, mm. where they're going. I don't know how. <laughs> oh. You ever drive with Grandma? Grandma shouldn't drive. They drive that three miles an hour. Are we moving, Grandma? Are we? I'm not sure. Our Grandma lived with us. I was terrified of our Grandma. There she is. There's Grandma. Hi, Grandma. 
had to go by her room to get to the stairway. That was a terrifying experience. Send Tommy first. Go, 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 go. And he'd make a bio. I made it. Come on. I made it. Come on. Come on. Come on. I never made it. Louie! Hi, Grandma. She's always crocheting. Had those doilies all over. Look like landmines, you know? Hi, Grandma. Come in here and see your grandmother. <laughs> Tell Mom and Dad I'm going in. Louie, stay on the doilies. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Yeah, that little coin purse. I really, kids always zero in on the money, don't they? Yeah, that 20 compartment coin purse, paisley, lace, clear. I'm gonna give you a nickel. How about some of those 20s in there? <laughs> <laughs> Grandmas will say anything they want, won't they? Sitting at that table? I don't know why the hell you ever married him. <laughs> and your dad, you know, he's looking at her like he's measuring up for a coffin, you know. <laughs> Dads have that look a lot, don't they, dads? Just in general. Hi, dad. My dad would get frustrated when he'd yell at us. He always had two words, and it always made sense then. You moved when he said that. Now get up there and uh, get that... This... God damn it. <laughs> What's he talking about? I don't know. Pick up this stuff. Is this it, Dad? Man about this? Oh, that's not it. <laughs> God damn it! My dad was an angry man. A lot of people have angry parents. Uh, we out to dinner. He would start fights. He loved to start fights. Uh, we had dinner, whole family, just having a good time. He'd look over. What are you looking at? <laughs> and the guy would go, "What? No? Yeah?" How'd you like me to come over there and kick your ass? <laughs> I'm just the guy that can do it, pal. But uh, you can't pick your family. You can't. If you could, you'd probably make a mistake. If you see someone, you go, that looks like a good family. You're behind those doors. <laughs> What are you going to do? Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. That's why we drive. Just keep driving. <laughs> Got to be careful driving. You ever hit an animal? <laughs> you ever hit that bird? All of a sudden you're driving along. Don't worry, be happy. He's on the radio. Foo, 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 foo. hit a bird. You look back, you see that bird doing that one wing thing in the back. <laughs> Did you ever hit a person? Oh, you'd remember that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Ideally, when you hit them, you'd want it to be like in the movies, you know, where you hit the hood, they roll up over. <laughs> Off the back. <laughs> Watch it! <laughs> Watch out for deer. That's the thing we have to watch out for. Deer, here. Always, you hear those stories. Oh, Christ, huh? Yeah. Uh, Ben, Emma, you know, driving down, just taking on there goes. They had the Chrysler, I'm not sure what they had.
They're driving down there, just going, you know, just flipping along there, you know, up 55 there, just move along, you're coming into town, just had finished doing something. And he said, oh, Christ, here's what happened. <laughs> All of a sudden, a big deer, buck, I think, I'm not sure, it could have been a doe, I don't know what it was. <laughs> big goddamn deer just there, right in the middle of the road, you know? Well, they're lying, they're, they're, you know, their eyes, they freeze right on the goddamn headlights, you know? <laughs> well, you know, he can't stop or shit, you know, so he just... He hits that thing, that thing comes up there, slides, come through the windshield, kill both of them for Christ's sake. I'm not shitting you. Tell you what I would have done if I'd been driving, I would have speed up, raise that car up, and we'll run that son of a bitch down. That's why I don't worry about deer. They say they freeze on your headlights. I always wonder, what's a deer thinking when that happens? <laughs> what is that, a Toyota? <laughs> or a Mazda, what the? Or is it my lucky day and two Kawasaki's are coming at me? And what if you turn the lights off? Could the deer go, oh, thanks. <laughs> you got to watch that, those deer. It's... You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of hunters in this state. A lot of people hunt deer. Of course, it is the animal we should hunt because they are a vicious group. <laughs> Aren't they horrible? I mean, don't you hate, wouldn't you hate to lift that shade up in the morning and see three deer out in the yard? <laughs> Get the gun! <laughs> They're nibbling that rubber band off the paper again! <laughs> well, I read the other day where they kicked the guy's door and hoofed him to death. <laughs> we followed your Buick here, you killed our son! Get his head, boys. <laughs> People get big guns to kill these deer. I've seen these guns. What do they go in? You got anything for deer on? Try this. <laughs> Christ. It's a little big, isn't it? Well, it seems big. But let's say you got the deer lined up and an oil tanker comes between you and the deer. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> yeah, that hunting thing. Make it more fair for the animal. You know, Swiss Army knife. <laughs> the one with the little toothpick and everything. And grizzly bear. That's what you imagine that. Your dad, where are you going? Hunting. <laughs> Your dad brings a grizzly back. You'll never talk back to him again if he got it with that knife, huh? <laughs> you killed that with a Swiss Army knife, Dad? Wow. I had the knife out and I was just about to stab him. The thing knocks it out of my hand. Luckily, I had that little toothpick in my mouth. <laughs> I bore it into his temple. <laughs> oh, well. Hunting, hunting. It's the guns that are the problem. I don't know. Hunting isn't... Those guns aren't so bad. But I bought a gun once. I never thought I'd buy a gun. But I did. I bought one. I was in Wyoming. This lady comes up working on the film there, and the lady comes up and she goes, you can get a gun here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Handgun. Just get one. Really? Just get a, just, yeah, just walk in and get one. I'll get you one. You want one? I'll get you one. 
Well, you know, I don't have one. <laughs> you live in a city, don't you? Yeah. Get one. <laughs> Get one. You're going to need one. You're going to need one So, Get one. Get me one. <laughs> Christ, don't wait. <laughs> what kind of bullets you want? What kind of gun am I getting? <laughs> what do you want? Mm -hmm. You know, so James, you ever see James Bond films? Well, like that, huh? Just scare them away. You live in a city, don't you? Yeah. Get a hollow tip. You're gonna need them. All right. So now I got the gun. I don't even know what to do with it. I got the gun. You know, I'm looking at it. You do this for a while. You do that. <laughs> for about five minutes, and you're done with that. You know how that all goes. That's what you do. You got the gun. Now I got to get home with this gun. Now how long am I going to get this gun home? You know, put it in luggage, right? Not, you know, in the luggage that you're going to send through, right? So now I got the gun in the luggage. Hollow tips. <laughs> now I start thinking, well, what if those bullets open up, spill out down by the socks? And the gun gets caught on the underwear, <laughs> opens up. Baggage guy, you know how they throw those things. <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> Little chihuahua in the pet crate. <laughs> Arr! What the hell is that? <laughs> Sound like a hollow tip to me. Finally, I dismantled the gun, made it into a mobile. <laughs> I felt safer that it was in a mobile. Hoping there won't be an earthquake and a wind at the same time. Because <laughs> you think you need a gun. People tell you you need one, man. Because you hear those stories. Ah, I was just there, just laying there, and, you know, sleeping, and a guy came in. Ba -ba 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 -ba! And they had a gun had they had a gun. Imagine trying to get the gun if someone was in your house. Get the gun! Where is it? It's above the crib. Where are the bullets? In the backyard. <laughs> there are those guys who get those people. You've read those stories, haven't you? That get the guy breaking in the house. Man, that guy was... You know he's been sitting there a while. Tonight's the night. <laughs> Honey, let me have your gold watch here on the windowsill. Raise that up a little more. <laughs> Boom! I got one! <laughs> oh, Christ. It's your brother, honey. <laughs> no, he wasn't working anyways. <laughs> that whole thing about guns, though, I just don't get it. To protect ourselves. <laughs> you could never find it if you needed it. I can't even find the remote control. <laughs> yeah, well, you do worry about someone coming to your house, don't you? You read all those stories. You ever wake up in the middle of the night and think you heard the wrong sound? 
You do that listening? That listening with your eyes? You know? noise to try to scare the burglar off. <laughs> I know if I was in the house robbing it and I heard, <clears throat> get out, he's coughing. <laughs> you ever do this dumb thing? Who's out there? <laughs> like if you heard, just me, I'm coming in to kill you. I've got a gun. I've got the bullets. I found them in the backyard. <laughs> oh, God. We do think we need guns, though. That is true. Because we're, we're, we get a lot of propaganda out there, man. You watch the news for 15 minutes, you'll be paranoid. 15 people murdered, 30 dragged from their homes, hurricane kills 20, 50 raped, 45 taken hostage, 30 kidnapped. A dog gets a home. <laughs> you start getting paranoid. Who's out there? Who's out there? <laughs> Crackheads. <laughs> that crack thing, huh? Every other person here should be on it the way I got it figured. Am I right? Crack? No crack? Crack? Are you on crack, ma'am? Mom on crack. Film report at 11. No crack? Crack? No crack? I mean, you know, so that's the way you make it seem. Like everybody's uh, sneaking out to do crack every film. Who are these people doing crack? And they, uh, they make it... I don't quite know, how, I mean, I don't know what to do about it. I thought about what could you do about it. You know, Bush is not the answer. <laughs> it's not that I'm against him personally, it's that I'm against like his uh, being out of touch. Like people woke up one morning and went, yeah, I think I'll be a crackhead now. Come on. People didn't wake up and do that. People got up and went, well, I could get that 425 an hour job, or I could sell crack, get a BMW, 100,000 in cash, big gold chains. 425 an hour. Well, 425. What's the ceiling on that 425? <laughs> I could eventually manage people who make 425? Uh, new BMW is one, one of those. BMW, brand convertible. Cash this tall. Yeah, but... Hmm. What time would I start every day? Eight? your life to go and talk to a crack dealer? Yeah, listen, I'm... Boom! <laughs> Shit! God 
damn it, honey, I told you this wouldn't work. <laughs> Same with the homeless thing. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with these homeless people. They got nine coats on. <laughs> they got nine? No wonder they're hot and hunched over. <laughs> They're the only ones not on crack. They ain't got nowhere to do it. <laughs> we try to give them money, you know, that whole thing, comic relief, you know, give them money, give them money, give them money. Well, they failed at the system the first time. This is not going to work with these people. They went, system, job, family, car, friends, people, shopping cart. <laughs> That's where I want to go. Give me another coat. <laughs> Give me another coat and a shopping cart. They got all the good ones. <laughs> you never see them walking in circles, do you? <laughs> Go to the produce department sometime. You say, Goddamn homeless. They got nine coats, they got no shoes. It looks like they have shoes till you look close. Oh, those are, those are feet. Ooh, ouch. I get mad at them. I wanna go, what the hell, what the hell? What the hell are you doing? Huh, what is the problem? God damn it. Take a coat off now while I'm talking to you. <laughs> At the end of the conversation, I want all those coats off, goddammit. <laughs> There's homeless people in China without a coat because of you. <laughs> well, put these shoes on, I brought you, for Christ's sake. And give me that cart. The solution is to let them into our homes. That's it. But we're not going to. I won't even let my family stay with me. <laughs> I don't know what to do with these people. We want them to straighten up. Well, I hear my dad talking. Now straighten up! God damn it! I'll come over and give you a swift kick in the ass! And I'm just a guy that can do it! That's what you want to say, though. That isn't going to work either. You have to love them, but that's the hard part, loving in this society. We just don't want to do it. There's just no commitment to it. I love you. Oh, don't start that shit. <laughs> oh, it's so much easier to hate. I love to hate. Everybody does. So much easier. So much more fun. So much more fun. Oh, man. The whole world's set up on it. Try to do something, they'll start hating you right away. Start talking nice stuff. Oh, I hate that. Louis brings up that nice stuff. I hate him. We used to like Louis, and then he started talking about that. No, I hate him. <laughs> Fun to hate, though. Because there's pressure on us. That's why I think I hate so much, is because, well, first of all, I was told this thing where I'm not supposed to hate. I can remember going when I was uh, three years old, I hate that guy. And my mom went, We don't hate. Well, I hate that guy. <laughs> we don't hate. That. Well, yeah, I hate. <laughs> well, what about Dad? Well, that's different. But not to depress anyone, that's not what I'm out to do, you know, not to make anyone depressed, because I don't know what the hell to do. If I knew what to do, then I'd write a book and make a million dollars, everything would be perfect. <laughs> but I don't know what to do. I buy things, that's how I feel better. I don't know about you. I just start buying stuff, man. What, uh, what's for sale? What could make me feel better? That's what you want to do, go buy something. 
Otherwise, MTV, that makes you feel better, doesn't it? <laughs> Strap a big TV on your head. Yeah, here. Oh, what's going on? MTV News. All right. Oh, Madonna's got a headache. <laughs> what the hell kind of world is this? Sorry, Madonna. Bon Jovi gets a haircut. Oh, Christ, that'll be good, won't it? <laughs> it's better than 30 dead, 50 killed, 40 hostage. Much better to hear. But Don, has got a headache. Oh, Christ, I'm not going out for a month. <laughs> Buy something, that's what I do. Get a car, that's what I did. I had a lot of problems, then I got a new car. I felt better. I felt much better. Where are you going, Lou? Buy a car. Really? Oh, yeah. Feel better. Buying a car, that's a job, isn't it? First of all, my dad's voice comes out of my head when I go to look at cars. I see that sticker price. What? <laughs> Christ, I could buy a farm with that kind of money. Can you see me driving a big barn down the street? <laughs> People pull up next to you. Christ, Bill, look at that. I could buy a Mercedes with the money you spent on that farm. <laughs> <laughs> I hate going in to buy a car. There's nothing. I have to practice at home before I go in there. Do you ever do that? All right, I don't want any bullshit. I don't want any bullshit, buddy. I know cars. I know cars. My father knew cars and his dad knew cars, God damn it. I don't want any bullshit out of you. How's that sound? A little too mean? Oh, all right. Oh, this is a good thing to say, too. All right. I saw this same damn exact car down the street for $2,000 less. That's a good thing to say. Because really what you want to walk in there and go, hey, any chance you guys being nice to me? <laughs> I don't want any bullshit. You're not going to get any. Really? That's good to know. I saw this car $2,000 less down the street. No, you didn't. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Those car dealers, man. Where do they get these guys? Where they wake up one day, look in the paper, assassins, assassins. Who car dealers? <laughs> hey, you want to get a car? Got a car? You want to buy a car? Got to get a car? Come on in. I'll sell you a car. You like cars? I got cars. I know cars. I got cars. Come on in. Cars, shit. You ever been homeless? <laughs> How about that group, huh? <laughs> We're a lot better than them, right? There's <laughs> nothing you can do, because you don't know how much a car's worth, really. Who knows how much a car's worth? Well, this is how they make up the prices. What did it cost, 600 to make? Uh, 59,000. <laughs> 995, 99. It's about right. And you know as soon as you drive a car out of the lot, you pull up to a stoplight, people go, where'd you get just buy that? Oh, Christ, I saw that for $2,000 less down the street. <laughs> really? I hate car dealers. They lie. They're set up to lie. We don't care either. We don't care that we're lied to. It's all a big lie. We don't care if we're lying. Go ahead, lie to us. Yeah, tell me how great I look in this. This is a car for me, right? Right, what was your name, Slick? Yeah, right, Slick? This is a car for me happening, wouldn't you say? That's a car for you, Lou. That's a car for you. That's a car for you, Lou. That's the car for you. I'll take it. That's a horror. They should cut their fingers off when they lie. And then their hands, and then their arms. Oh, you'd know who you were dealing with, wouldn't you? <laughs> Come on in! <laughs> Got a hell of a deal!
deal for you. I'm not kidding you. Oh, Christ, we're slashing prices as we talk. Dangerous, dangerous, a lot of dangers. Careful. You ever walk from your bedroom into the kitchen in the dark? <laughs> Think you know where everything is? That's my favorite thing. You know that little cement coffee table? <laughs> you really think you know where you're doing, don't you? You really, I love that, that we think we know our house that well, you know? I know where everything is in this place, I'll tell you. Oh! Oh, God! And your foot doesn't progress, it just stops right there. Ooh! It's like your toe's been sheared off, you know? <laughs> and you do that pain dance. Oh, God! Oh! Okay, all right, okay. Who put this here? <laughs> Jesus, who what they were thinking? Oh, okay, all right, look down. Okay, look down. Okay, look down. Oh, not yet. All right, look down. All oh, toes gone. <laughs> Wonder if the cat took it. That's something a cat would take, wouldn't he? Who <laughs> told? <laughs> cat will take a toe. Dog, though, get that toe in his mouth. Is that a grape? <laughs> I gotta get a drink out of the toilet. <laughs> the cat, though, cat would love to have that toe in it. <laughs> Got your toe, Lou. We love our animals, don't we? We like dogs because they're dumb. I figured that out. Because you can order them around. Get over there! <laughs> now get back over there! Cat, you couldn't do that. Get over there! <laughs> you don't have my toe. I've got yours, pal. My dad was always trying to kill our dog. Don't pour that bacon grease on it. Pour it over his food. He loves that. Oh, and he did, too. Bacon grease over the food. Yeah, yeah. The cat would go, what are you doing? You make us look so stupid, you know that? It's harder with you around. Did you see the toe I got? Even to this day, I walk by that table. My foot knows what to do. <laughs> the cat goes, another toe? <laughs> it's hard to change. That's the thing that I've noticed. It's really difficult to change. 
Sometimes we'll do it. Most times we won't. Most times we have to be, well, have a close call with death. That's where you read those stories, don't you? Oh, yeah, this guy had a miserable life. Then all of a sudden I found out he had one week to live. And Christ, he's lived uh, three weeks. <laughs> and he's happy about those extra two weeks. Christ said, you got something, money? What? Or if you're forced to change, you know, somebody puts their foot on the back of your neck while your face is scraping against cement. <laughs> All right! I'll change. Let me up! I'm not changing. <laughs> you change. You change, and then maybe I'll change. Maybe. I might not. I might not want to. <laughs> then you'd be changed. <laughs> I'd be the same. <laughs> <clears throat> that happened to me. I had that gallbladder attack. Didn't think that that's how it was going to affect me, but that I had that. Uh, you ever been in bed and you think, I can't sleep? Why can't I sleep? I don't feel good. I don't feel right. It doesn't work. It is. It is. Start doing that, you know, moving around stuff till you get. Like you're a doctor. <laughs> Well, ooh, what's that? Ooh. <laughs> you all right, Lou? Oh, a little pain here. Oh, it progressively gets worse till you're in one of these positions. You all right? Yeah, as long as I stay like this. <laughs> Finally go to the hospital. Oh, that's a horrible experience. Because hospitals, you know, the emergency rooms, they don't really care about you unless you're spurting blood into their face, you know? <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah? So are all those people. Go sit with them. <laughs> Move over. Do you have a knife? Finally, they give you that room. Don't you hate that one? Take you to that room and push that little shower curtain around there. As soon as that closes, people start looking in there. <laughs> Who's in here? Get out of here. <laughs> I'm dying. They always put you next to someone who is really sick and you hear them. <laughs> What happened to her? Dear. <laughs> no matter how sick you are, too, you ever know? You're laying on the bed. No matter how sick you are, you look around for stuff to steal. comes in. All right, get undressed, put this on. Because you forget about your pain suddenly. You're starting trying to hide your butt, you know? <laughs> you all right, Lou? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> feel great. You see my ass? Then you 
always get the doctor at three in the morning from another country. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. You from a friendly country? Oh, I love your rugs. some tests on me? Great. They always want to take blood in the hospital. You ever notice that? Well, they can't wait to take your blood. They just can't wait for you to get in and get that blood, can they? they always get the guy who's never done it before. Huh? a vein. You can't find a vein, now I can sprinkle my lawn. Now the doctor wants to put an IV in me. Oh, great. IV. Now I will be sick. They always put it here. Uh, nothing goes here. See that? Do you hear that? Oh, I it's all bone there. <laughs> oh. How you doing, Lou? air gets in there, I'm dead. I'm dying! Here, put those gauze in her mouth. <laughs> boy, when you're in pain, boy, you start pleading for drugs. That's the thing I remember. I don't care if you're a Catholic nun, you'll be asking for drugs. So. <laughs> I'm sister... Whatever, I forgot. And Doc, uh, God must be on a break, because I gotta have something. <laughs> That's what you say to the doctor, don't you? I gotta have something for this pain. Hey, Doc, give me something for this pain, would you, man? Because, listen, you gotta give me something for this pain, because, Doc, I gotta have something for this pain. <laughs> Doc, I'm not kidding you, man. Listen, give me something for this pain. So the doctor said, well, put him on a morphine drip. Now, I don't know anything about morphine, but my brain knew about this. <laughs> my brain started talking to me. All right, now shut your big mouth. <laughs> I've been waiting 35 years for this morphine. Now you keep your big trap shut. <laughs> Boy, that changed everything, man. Got on that morphine. How you doing? I'm on a morphine drip. It's a morphine drip. Come on in, we're having a rap session. Come on, morphine drip. That's ah, beautiful. Nurse, I'm dripping. The pain is gone. A miraculous discovery. I'm cured. Hey. Hey. Are you still dying? <laughs> I was dying. Get some morphine. <laughs> Have them put you on a morphine drip. I take those gauze out. Look. <laughs> that was a big deer. <laughs> Doc! 
come on in. Come on in. I gotta talk to you. Get in here. Doc. Hey Doc. How long will this morphine drip last? Because you might have to put a little more in. <laughs> Doc. We gotta talk about the problems in the world. We gotta settle this Middle East thing, man. You guys gotta quit fighting. Really, no more fighting. Let whoever wants what have it. Christ, hey! <laughs> Doc, could I tell you something? I took these gods. <laughs> it's a peace gesture. Don't tell anyone. Really, you know what the problem is, Doc? MTV. <laughs> That's what the problem is. Let's talk about it, Doc. God damn it. <laughs> you got, you look different, and you talk funny, well, different, and you're fighting over there, straighten it out. We got our palms over there, you got your palms over here. Get everyone on a morphine drip over there. <laughs> well, I think the problem with the world is simple. You just can't tell someone you love them. Do you ever notice that? If you told somebody you love them, right away they go, what, what are you talking about? Don't say that to people. That's the problem. You have to be able to say that you love them. Like, I love you, Doc. Not like that. <laughs> but I love you as a human. God damn it. <laughs> or Allah damn it, I don't know. <laughs> Just one thing, Doc, really. Two things, one thing, two things. <laughs> A lot of stuff's going on. But you gotta do this, Doc. You gotta tell everyone that you love them right off and they won't be mad at you about having that thing on your head. <laughs> they won't be afraid of you. And the other thing, get a new guy to take blood. See, that's what's wrong with the world, Doc. You have to be able to say that you love someone, everyone. We're all in the same boat. Yeah, some of us don't have our oars in the water. <laughs> the homeless and the crackheads and the MTV Madonna heads and the deer that we kill and the birds, they're all in the same boat, man. And we have to say that we love each other. And that's it. Easy to say when you're on morphine. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs>